Hello and welcome everybody to the second episode of The Legend of the Fat Slop. This has been a long time coming. Not too long ago, I uploaded the first episode of The Legend of Fat Slob, and for those that missed it, Fat Slob is a legend for doing one very interesting thing. He will play only Black Forest with Age of Conquerors Vikings balance, so it's always a Vikings war, it is always Black Forest, and what he is known for is what we're about to see, and it is a lot of walls. So before we get into this, I want to thank you guys for the amount of support that came in on that video. We're closing in on 300,000 views now. I did not expect him to blow up that much. Also, Fatslob didn't expect that he would blow up. Uh, what we have here is the Fatslob's Voobly profile. So I figured before we start, I should read some of the comments that were left from people, including Fatslob himself. So I believe this was the day after I uploaded the video. Uh, Fatslob posted this on my wall. He also posted it on his own profile. And I'm just going to read this off here. He says, Hi all, Fat Slob here. Really like the YouTube video, T90. You made an extremely boring game seem quite entertaining with your comments. Never knew I was a legend. As you all know, I suck at this, but for some reason, I love the game so much that I can't quit it. I found my way of playing the game so I can at least win some of the games. I am not playing to piss people off. I just play to win. Having said that, I must admit, it's a little fun when people do get pissed off. However, I enjoy long games. Endurance is my middle name. The reason I seldom comment when people taunt me is that I'm fully occupied trying to play the game. Multitasking is not my middle name. Huh, he's well-spoken, isn't he? But then again, it's kind of enjoyable when people start calling me an idiot and a noob. Maybe they are right, but then again, what does it say about losing to an idiotic noob? I am from Sweden, but I'm a bit younger than my birthday info here implies. This is because I pointed out that he's... His profile said he was born in 1949, so apparently he's younger than that. Too bad, though, that the video didn't show a game where I actually fight. I'm not all about hiding. I can actually fight pretty good once my economy and army is together. But maybe we can see that in another video with me, The Legend of Fat Slob. So he pretty much did my job for me there. I have another game. Fat Slob plays nonstop, it seems. If you look at his matches, you can see that he's played pretty recently. I'm recording this on the 25th of September, so he plays frequently. Uh, you look at his rating, again, I'll remind you that he is closing in on 4,000 1v1 games. And if you look at the, the profile, if you look at his stats, it's all Vikings. <laughs> all Vikings, all Black Forest, all the time. And we are going to get into the second episode of The Legend of Fat Slop. So just let me go back to the game. And here we go. So, we have Fat Slob in the south. He is playing as the Vikings, of course. And then in the north, we have a guy uh, who will probably not be happy that he is in a video of mine. His name is Listroyo. And Listroyo, of course, played this game the other day versus Fat Slob. Uh, he... Neither of these players know that I downloaded the recorded game to cast it, so this might be a surprise to both. But anyway, what Fatslob is known for are his walls, and the best way to beat Fatslob is just beat him to the punch. And Fatslob immediately researches Loom. See, he doesn't care that he's housed. He doesn't care about any of that. It's just that his priority is to get the walls up. And he places a nice wall here. And he'll wall it off. <laughs> and, uh... So, just like that, Fatslob sacrifices his scout, but he doesn't care. He doesn't care about the idle time at home. He doesn't care that he's two vills down already. Yeah. He just cares about giving himself some time. So, I want to hear... This is going to be a, a decently long game, so what I'd like from you guys is to, to give me your thoughts on Fatslob. He does put in the description of the settings, he says it's 1v1 Black Forest Vikings. He never plays with the new balance where onagers can cut trees. So... While many people might not like his strategy, it's not as if he tricks people into playing them, right? So I'm, I'm just curious what you guys think of it, uh, about Fat Slob and how he acts and how he plays. I, I think this is a video game, right? The goal is to have a good time, and so it, it's up to the host to decide what the settings are, and as long as you make those settings clear, then I say live your life. The, the funny thing is, everyone gets sucked into playing him at least once. Because you'll you'll get off school or work and you go home and you want to play something and you just see this lobby. You're like, hmm. 1v1 Black Forest Vikings. Well, I need a game, so let's join. What's the worst that can happen? 
and then you you quickly realize oh boy this guy has a set plan and I'm gonna have to cancel my plans later on in the day because of this <laughs> so uh, I actually played Fats Love you can see that on YouTube and I I decided ahead of time that I wouldn't stop him walling up like that would be cheating and so what I had to do was I had to cut through the trees with trebuchets which is it's a difficult thing to do but when I played there was a wood line like this and I was able to go through there so maybe if red knows what fat sobs up to he'll try and go through there yeah now, this is all assuming that he'll have quite an edge on fat sob in the economy because you really need that you have to have a jump start on him because he'll start walling up now it's funny uh, I I stream this game on a regular basis. I make videos on a regular basis. This is my full-time gig now. And uh, so, you know, I, I do research before I cast games like this. I look at the recorded games. I I try and see who's been playing. You can see the in-game chat. So that's pretty fun as well. I can see who got salty with Fat Slob before I choose to, to watch a game. And... Uh, Right after I uploaded the Legend of Fat Slob video, so many of my regular Twitch viewers played him. And it was just so funny. It's so funny how many names I recognize. Like, people saw the video, and yet they still wanted a taste. And these are two, three, four hour long games sometimes. Sometimes people get frustrated, sometimes they don't. But it's just funny. Like, you, you saw what his strategy is, and you want to try it anyway? Oh man, it's kind of like when you're growing up, your parents are like, that's hot, don't touch that. And you say, ha, well, I gotta find out for myself. And that's why I only have four fingers on my right hand. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm good when it comes to fingers. I'm also good when it comes to uh, choosing my Age of Empires 2 games, because I too have played Flat Sob. I played him a few years ago. I did lose to him. This is back before I made any videos or anything. But yeah, um, Red clicks up to feud lage pretty early here and normally i'd say this is not a good time for a fast castle build but considering he's vikings and gets free wheelbarrow and considering he has the extra meat out here then it might not be the end of the world if he balances his economy correctly behind this and it might cook up around the same time you know fat slobs clicked up relatively early as well so i think that they both for a fast castle build gone up a bit earlier than they should but, okay, Red's going to wall this off. So maybe he was worried Fat Sub would pressure him. <laughs> he was worried that the guy who triple palisaded would pressure him. And Fat Sub will probably wall up here as well. So a lot of this is RNG based. Uh, in Age of Empires 2, you have your main gold, which is seven tiles. You have a, a second and a third gold. And those are going to be four tiles. And then there are two neutral golds, and there are always three. So you see the one three tile Fat Slob has. And the other one's actually out here in this wooded area, so both players would have to try to cut towards that with Lumberjacks. Or with Trebs or something. Um, also the relics as well can be dispersed differently. And so Fat Slob, I would say, has an advantage when it comes to relics and golds. Because he gets that extra gold, and he has three relics on his side. But not the end of the world for red. He does have two. It's not a huge difference. And, um... Well, I guess all the extra stones are pretty random. This one can be chopped to by Fat Slob. Um... Yeah, that's about it. So Red doesn't have anything extra, I guess. Which is a disappointment, I'm sure. But he clicks up to Castle Age first. Fat Slob is right behind him. Red has two more villagers as well, so he's definitely ahead. But, well, I have it on fast speed because if you've seen Fat Slob play before, you probably won't be surprised to know that he's just going to boom. And that's what both should do in this situation, anyhow. Now, this is... this just cracks me up, guys. <laughs> this is what Red sees. Now, we have no way of knowing if Red knows who Fat Slob is. Obviously, now he will know, but maybe he never watches YouTube. Maybe he he doesn't watch Twitch. Maybe he's never played Age of Empires 2 versus Foutslot before. He might not know his reputation. And in fact, there's more and more people coming to the game now, especially coming to the Voobly platform. So they're going to see this guy with, with thousands of games and 
he seems like a nice guy in the lobby, so why not play him? Well, Red is going to be in for a rude awakening. Fat Slob is not doubling down, not tripling down, not quadrupling down, but, well, whatever's after that, I... I'm sure YouTube will help me out in the comments. Normally, I don't have to say anything past quadruple, okay? Fatsop breaks the mold. He breaks the meta. So that's that's my excuse. <laughs> and uh, I, I just... I can't wait to see Red's response to this. There's been nothing in the chat yet. They have not spoken to each other. Fatsop normally does not speak. As he said in that comment, he said uh, that he's focused. It's not that he wants to be a jerk. It's just that he's focused. And I say, yeah, that's fine. But Fat Slob walls up like this. And then he accepts the fact that his economy will be behind. He accepts the fact that he'll get upgrades later than his opponent. And he's hoping the walls will buy him time. Now, in reality, this is just a true tryhard coming out in me. He doesn't need to wall this with two villagers. This one villager could be doing something else. After you get a few layers, after you get past quadruple layers, guys, you can just wall with one vill. That's no problem. But he's obviously in a rush. We have one, two, three. This is kind of tough. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's seven, maybe eight layers, depending on the angle you look at it from. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's interesting with the elevation, that one wall. Looks like the walls are here. Uh, walls here are higher. But anyway, I don't want to look at the walls too much. I'll start getting cancer. So I'll look away from the walls. Yeah. And look to, to Red's base. And he has one, two, three, four town centers. And look at the farms here. All right. So he's really booming up. I heard he got a relic as well. He's going to get a second one now. And it is played on explored, so he will know that there's a gold out here. He will know there's a stone here. So maybe you place town centers near those wooded areas to eventually chop through. So just a couple small things here. Uh, and Fat Slob or, or Listro, if, whoever, they can learn from this, I'm sure, if they end up watching the video. Uh... You never want to have this many villagers on one lumber camp, and you never want villagers walking this kind of a distance. It would be much more efficient for him to spend 200 wood to build a lumber camp here and a lumber camp here. And that way villagers wouldn't walk as far, and they wouldn't run into each other as much. But, yeah, we'll see. And, and look at Red. <laughs> Red. Red thinks that's it. This is a smart decision from him. He is a 21 villager lead. So, he's obviously going to be able to pressure. Using the monk to scout, I like that move. <laughs> oh man, he sees all those walls. Fatslob lost... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm an idiot. Fatslob, he lost his scout. That, that's the only death and the only kill that we've seen this game. Okay, Fatslob is going for what I said Red should do. They've both kind of done this. Just chop through to the stone. If the game's going to be six hours, you might as well start chopping, right? So Fatslob said, shame you didn't show a game where I fight. So I happen to know that in this one he fights, okay? Now he tends to sit back. He tends to relax, have, have a sip of tea, and wait for his opponent to come in after him. But if he sees an opportunity, maybe he'll take it. He's getting fortified wall. And this is where the thumbnail comes in for YouTube. Yeah. Th this is where we get the good content. This is where the clickbait comes from. Nah, I would never clickbait. So fortified wall means these walls are obviously more fortified, much stronger. Fat Sub will actually hit him first, but there's a big difference in the overall economies. Only 63 villagers for Fat Sob, and it is 100 for Listro. Listro has his relics already as well. He just seems like a faster player. He seems like a better player. No offense to Fatslop, but he seems like a better player. But then, you know, we have to ask ourselves, what is the definition of better? It really comes down to wins and losses, doesn't it? Red might be better at, at booming up. He might be better at massing large economies. But Fatslop, he might be better with the strategy. And 
Of course, he he, he has had 4,000 games to practice this strategy. So, understand that when I say that red is better, that might mean better on other settings, but this is Fatsob's world. And okay, so red is... I'm going to start slowing it down once the action begins, I think. Uh, we'll see, but he's going with Capped Ram now. Doesn't seem to have any other plans at the moment. No archer ranges, not even a barracks. So he just wants to ram through. And he'll probably research Siege Ram at Fatsob. He has Siege Workshops. I mean, he's 50 population behind right now. What he tends to do is he'll get onagers, sit them behind the walls, and then there's nothing that Red can do besides treb down every piece of wall individually, which is it just takes forever. So Fat Slob has his fat walls. And yep, you see his trebuchets now. Now Fat Slob does not know what Red is preparing. Red does not know that he's only seeing half the walls here. There's a few things going on. But it's obvious, Red now, uh, they're both selling a little bit of resources. He has 4,000 gold. This is just crazy. It's smart to sell food and sell wood, as Fatsob is doing right now, to bank up as much gold as possible. The, the prices, they do change. They do get worse as you sell more. So it's Black Forest. There's going to be plenty of wood. So might as well sell it, right? And here comes Red. With siege rams, making archery ranges wouldn't be too unheard of for him to go for arbalest. That's a, a common feature from Vikings. And here he comes. So siege rams do a great job at taking down fortified walls. They really do. Especially when they're clumped up like this. You can see he's not damaging just the first layer of the wall, but he's damaging the second as well. So they have quite a bit of splash associated with their damage. And Red is in a wonderful position. Again, any other setting, and he is on the way to victory here. 160 population versus the 99 from Fatsob. This is taking a little bit of time, but <laughs> here he comes. And now he encounters what will probably frustrate him, Onager. So he, he just saw one shot, and his rams are kind of hesitant to push forward now. But Fatsov's not messing around here. He's researching Heavy Scorpion, which would just be perfect for the choke points. He's going for Onager now. The reason he chooses Vikings in the AOC balance is so he can utilize certain tools. And more importantly... Oops, I'm sorry. That was my phone. More importantly... Uh, listen, Fatsov... Sorry, Fatsov just texted me. He said that he's, he's ready for the video. I just told him to lay off. He's still casting. Uh, the, the biggest reason why Fatsop chooses Vikings, obviously, is so his opponent can't get through the trees. I really wonder if Fatsop will, will change his ways at some point and not go with Vikings. Because he tends to go Heavy Scorpion, Onager, and then his unique unit. There could be other sieves that would fit the bill, right? If he played the ASC data set... He could do other sieves just to mix it up every now and then. But I don't know. This guy has played 4,000 games on Vikings, so... Yeah, I doubt it. It's probably a bit like someone telling me to play a game other than Age of Empires 2. Yeah, I've spent years of my life doing this, and I'm addicted, so... N not gonna happen, friends. And probably we won't we won't see Fatsal play anything but Vikings in Age. So, Red is still in a nice position, right? He's, in fact, in a better position, arguably. He's at 100 fit, 185 pop. He's getting Cavalier now. He has Arbalest, almost full upgrades on him. He has his own Onagers, and this will be a slow process, but he's working on making his way through. He's up against the Legend of Fat Slob. He has a 1,000 score lead. He hasn't said a word yet. But this is where a player who's used to normal settings would start to be a bit frustrated. Like myself. But he sees the other side. And the grass is not greener there, I can tell you that much. 
What he doesn't know is just what Fatsov has here. But he's kind of found the answer. He wants to avoid Fatsov's armatures, so he got it, has his own armatures. And he can fire from distance. And once he gets into a certain point, it'll be difficult because of a surprise that Fatsov has waiting. All of this territory is owned by Fatsov. Listro. Yep. <laughs> he sees the Trevs. And yes, immediately, he gets so, immediately, he's like, you've got to be kidding me. He says, man, this is boring, come. He's like, come on, fight me, man, fight me. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that Red didn't have a clue who Fatsob was prior to joining this game, which is just a funny thing for me. It's, it's hilarious. And so initially, he went for Siege Ramps, which was the right move against the walls. Then he got Onager to win. He starts pushing his way in with these onagers, and then Fatsob has traps. Fatsob is going to continue to do this. And I I can feel the frustration through the computer. I, I can just tell, <laughs> as Red even loses his monk, that he is, is racking his brain. What do I do next? What do I do next? I have resources, I just can't get through. And guys, compare the amount of resources they have. Red not only has more military, he has way more resources. Look at the top left, and now look at Fatsob's resources. Fatsob's pretty far behind. I will say, you know, he's researched Berserker Gang and Elite Berserk. Those are pretty expensive techs. He also has Honiger and Heavy Scorpion, sure. He also made a lot of trebuchets, but Red still, actually, we can look. Red has collected way more resources. So again, if this was any other setting, you gotta say, Red is the better player, but this is Fatsob's world, my friends. So, again, I, I think what you have to do here is you have to play Fatsob's game, or you cut through here. Fatsob would see that, and he might just shift over, because he has outposts. He's experienced. But, uh... It's either cut through with trebs here, which would take some time and Fatsop would probably see it, or use your own trebs and slowly take down the walls. And he's, he's doing a good job, Red. He's gonna get through at this rate. So he'll have Arbalest, he'll have Cavalier. I don't like the Cavalier choice. Normally, Cavalier I get if you wanted something mobile to hit from different angles. But there's only one area you can go through. And so Viking Cavalier is not the best move because of that. You want to go with, well, they're Berserks. That's what you'd want to go with. Again, Red has no clue what's behind here. Look what Fatsov has. Oh, man. It's almost like the first 50 minutes of this game were the previews for the movie, and the movie's about to begin. So silence your phones, please, ladies and gentlemen. Only in this case... The previews were actually entertaining, and not a waste of my time. What happened there? Did he- oh, he must have deleted his own bills. That's probably it. So there's- there's a one-tile gap there. And I think these deer- did that deer just run through it? Okay. Red sees the trebuchets. And Fatsob's going out now! Fatsob loses- 97.1% of his Zerks, but he still gets through, and he should destroy most of the Onagers, and this, this is... Fatsob's not even in his final form, guys. This is not what we saw in the first episode. This is not what we saw at all, and Red's coming through with the Cavalier, which again is a horrible move as Vikings, and he runs right to his death. Holy shit, those Cavalier barely got a few hits in that was insane <laughs> that was insane red just lost 50 pop in the blink of an eye oh my god now can you imagine if your phone went off during that that would have been frustrating people would have complained and fatsob ding 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 he says let's go so in the southern corner coming in with 1911 wins and 2005 losses we have fatsob and 
uh, we have Listro here. I don't know how many wins or losses he has. I, I wasn't even correct with Fatsa. But the point is, is, the gloves are off now. The gloves are off. This is a fight. And now Red, he could choose to Fatslav Fatslav if you wanted to and just wait it out. But the tools that he has, the, the composition he has is entirely different. He's not invested into a lot of campy trebuchets. Uh, he has not invested into many onagers or scorpions. He also has cavalier, which didn't work out the first time. But he wants to pick up the onagers. That's what it is. He wants to pick up the onagers. So for that reason, I get it. And then his Arbalest can kill everything else. So it's good logic. I have to say, it's good logic. But against this many scorpions, the Cavalier will not last. That is a lot of scorpions from Fatslav. And he's creeping forward now. So look at the score. Fatslav takes the score lead. He has the population lead. This is not what we would have seen again in any other setting. Uh, I don't know why Fatslav built those palisade walls. Come on, Fatsla, build stone walls, man. That's more your speed. And Red's thinking, man, this Fatsla guy really has the right idea. I should make some trebuchets of my own to, to protect myself. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it's it's so... It must be so utterly frustrating to see this for the first time. And oh my god, Fatsla with the onagers. He could hit the arbs. He does not hit the Arbalest, unfortunately for all Fatslop fans, but the Cavalier, again, just do not contribute much. So Red loses Trebuchets, he could even lose some Monitors here. And he'll lose his Arbs if he stays here, I mean, he's losing everything. Uh, he does have a lot of his own Monitors, and these Scorpions are clumped, so they stack on top of one another. Fatslop can lose all those Scorpions in one fight, he's not careful. He needs to keep the Zerks in front, I think. Either Onagers, well, probably a combo of, of the Zerks uh, and Onagers in front. And right now, he doesn't have that. He needs to get his pop back up. This is where you can really tell just how good a player is, because it's not just booming up anymore. You have to fight, and then you have to recreate. And, okay, there's a actually a horrible Onager shot, right? I thought it would hit the Scorpion. And it didn't, and wow, he doesn't even kill a trap. And Fatslop sneaks in and does not kill anything with that. So let's let's look at the resources now. We have good resources for Fatslop, who again has more relics, had the extra gold pile. The red all of a sudden does not have gold in the bank anymore. And this is this is what we have come to expect from Thoughtsome. Very campy, stalled out game. There's a reason I don't cast these live. There's a reason I want to put a little bit of a, a speed boost on it. And give the game squires, right? So it runs a little bit faster. And while Thoughtsome, you know, he loses some of the Zerks, but look at him focusing down all the Onagers. Great job. You can tell he's clicked them all individually. He's not just patrolling in there. And just look at the, the red dead units. So a lot of wood, a lot of rubble here from the Onagers. And Fatslop, is he going to pack up his treps and move in? Again, using the Zerks, getting in, killing Onagers. It's still expensive to do this. So you got to make every, every attack worth it. It kind of feels like he's going to repair here. Uh, but he's still focused on this. Oh, the micro from red, much better in this engagement. Look at that. Can he get another shot? Oh, I'd hit the trebs if I were him. Oh, oh, he hit one? That's up. What are you doing? Hit it again, red. Instead, red runs away. And Fatsop is able to move forward with a few of his trebuchets on a lot of scorpions. But this looks dangerous for Fatsop. That is one too many onagers. And they could flatten the trebs and they could flatten the scorpions. There's so many scorpions there, it's just insane. But credit to Fatsop, yet again, he's keeping the onagers back. He's lost so many scorpions there, but you know, in a game that will go on for hours, it's good to just take trades where you can versus castles. So it's not easy to rebuild them. Now saying that, Red keeps his castle up. Fatslop retreats. And he's going to go back to his hole here. 
That was pretty close. I mean, the KD is, is even. This is as even as it can be, really. 180 kills for Fatsop, 173 deaths. And now Red, he doesn't have Scorpions, but he has the Arbalest. So I think Fatsop, what he needs is a few more Onagers to kill those. And now Red's like, okay, I got this. Time to counter. And then nope. <laughs> He's going to nope right out of here. You know, this little bit of elevation is really nice for Fatsop as well. Whoever holds this does more damage with their attacks and receives slightly less damage. So oftentimes when I cast, it will change player point of views mid-game. Um, so I guess you guys might not realize it as much, which is why I'm telling you now I'm going to click Fatslop and switch over. Does not have the food. In fact, his farms are expiring. So he needs to... He needs to queue up some more farms. But he does have the wood, he does have the gold. Uh, red, he doesn't have a ton of gold. Not like Fatslob was swimming in it either. Uh, but he's good when it comes to food and and wood, so maybe he can sell some of that. Oh, and he's also gonna chop. So if he gets through there, that's another 2,000 gold for him. So we are one hour and nine minutes into this game game time that is how many in the youtube comments would be tilted by this guy this is quite a good game again fat slob said he can fight he really can this is kind of like a turn-based game where they they take turns fighting each other but seriously this is this is a good game oh you know what fat slob has done here so you know how this game is 20 years old and there's a bunch of, of bugs that still exist. Uh, what you can do is you, you can place Palisade Foundations anywhere where there's not currently a building or a unit. Like, for example, you can see that he could place anything here, but if it's red, that means there's something there, right? So if you place foundations of any building... I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting over a cold. Sorry to sniff. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, then you can actually see what's standing on top of that foundation. So you still have to spend the wood to place the palisades, but what is a couple dozen palisade walls when you have 15,000 wood? So Fatslob is is giving himself spies in a sense. It's quite nice. He wants to know if Red's moving forward as early as possible. And I think that answers the question as to why the villagers are running into the center, because they're going to build those palisades. Now, I, I hate to ruin CBA for you guys, but for anyone out there who plays CBA, uh, you have unlimited resources in that. If you vill on CBA, you can then build palisades all over the map like this. Or, or since you have unlimited resources, you could go with something that covers more surface area, like a market. It wouldn't really matter. Nice shot there from Red. And oh my god, here he comes. Now, Red, he does not have palisades down. He couldn't even build it here because this land is covered in fat slob. And he has Viking Light Calf. And what's the issue with Viking Light Calf? Well, they don't have... Uh, they don't get hus... I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> they don't get bloodlines. And they don't get the final defense upgrade. And those two upgrades are, are so important. It's such a big deal if you lack them. So what a fight here! Here comes fat slob. Here comes red. Fat slob zerks. It might not last all that long because of the amount of Arbalest that Red has behind. But will Red's light cap survive here? We're looking at 80 military units from both players. And Red seems to be doing a good job, but look what happens when he gets in close to the Scorpions. That slob strategy paid off there. He came into this little corner, avoided the Arbalest, and then right when his Scorpions took out the light cap, he pushed out with those Zerks. Now, I will say he didn't kill all that much. He, besides the light cap, he didn't kill too many onagers or too many arbalests. But now, he could consider pushing forward with a few... Again, a few onagers would be extremely helpful, I think. Red going into light cap isn't the worst idea considering they don't have a lot of gold. And considering he has endless food. So... If you kill even a gold unit with the light cap, it's worth it. But you also have to think about pop efficiency. You can only have 200 pop. You're going to have 100 villagers. So if Fatsob has, has 
60 military units, and they're all gold units versus 100 that are not gold units, it, it could just be a, a waste to pop the infrared if he has the gold. So you want to be using gold if you have it. That's my point. Win. Uh, unfortunately, this wolf will not find any kills there. But Red will almost get through to that gold. And he's not having many gold issues now because he's selling the wood. He's selling the food. The overlay is telling us when this happens. So in Fat Slab settings, do you ever run out of gold truly? Because you're both probably going to get some relics. It's like Force Nothing where there's endless trees. So... Yeah, maybe maybe gold is never a concern. It has not been a concern for Fatsa. We haven't seen one skirmisher, one pikeman, one lightcap from him. It has been only gold units. And there we go. <laughs> That is a lot of light calf, man. That is a lot of light calf. And Red Red says, why not? Again, using my logic. Just just try and get a trade. Kill one on a trade. And it might be worth it in his eyes. So far, he has not done much, guys. Oh my goodness, the light calf are just disintegrating. And this time that sub has the onager numbers. So if he kills the light cap, and he is, the onagers can then flatten the, uh, the onagers from red and all the arbalests. And just look at the population difference. Now, Fatsob's at 170 population versus the 127 of red. But these units can't even close in to the onagers because of the amount of scorpions. It's just insane. It's absolute insanity. And now Fatsob knows this is my time. This is my time. I'm pushing forward, and I'm going to kill these castles. Not that the castles have, have really been used by Red. He didn't go for Zerks. He's kind of done with Trebs. Uh, Fatslob, he is going to try and take out this castle here. And again, the light cap just gets destroyed. They don't even kill. They're not even killing one onager. I mean, I know that I'm acting surprised. I should know that, but it's just so rare that you see this many scorpions as viable. Because in normal circumstances, it's a risk to make this many scorpions because they can easily be flattened. And that's really what Red has to hope for now. He has to hope for sneaking a few onagers out to flatten them. Uh, every time he sends an onager out, though, Fatsob is on the ball. And he, he focuses them down. And that micro from Fatsob is really superb. I mean, again, he pulls back the Zerks and he cleans it up. 432 kills for him now. And only 280 deaths. And Red. Oh, he rebuilds a castle here. Right in harm's way, which I find interesting. There we go. That's up. He didn't patrol his scorpions, or just something was going wrong there. He loses his onagers on front. So Red finally got that kill, but at what what cost, right? He's he sacrificed only food units, sure, but he's also sacrificed a lot of map control. And now he's really under pressure. I mean, Red needs to continue to create. It's not, it's not easy to do this. He's just sending units one by one to their death. And I remember earlier he said this was boring. Well, I wonder what he thinks now. <laughs> oh, there we go. There's an Andrew shot from Red. I like that. Keeping his castles up for the time being. Oh, I would love to see these scorpions get flattened. I, I'm a fan of Fat Slop because of his crazy strats, but... It's so rare that you see this many scorpions, and there's such a good opportunity here to flatten them. He goes for the trebs first. Another onager will be on the way. That's like 20 scorpions going down there. The red, there's a little bit of life in him now. That's up. He doesn't have the reinforcements. And he has another onager coming out. And Fatslob. Oh, he's missed micro this. He'll run into the castle fire. So Red is, is hanging in here. 135 pop for Fatsob and 125 for Red. I don't know if Fatsob plays on multi queue or single queue. It seems like it's single queue, so that means you have to toggle through all your buildings. I don't think there's a way in the settings on recorded games for me to know that. But yeah, I think they're both going to pop back up now. <laughs> I think yeah, we can see just how difficult it is for them to keep their population high. They take one big fight, they lose 60 units, and then that's it. 
So, Fat Slob's pop's going up, Red's pop is going up. And they're gonna take a little break. The Legend of Fat Slob Episode 2 has not disappointed. In terms of actual gameplay, this has been far superior to the first episode. Oh! Oh! Red says, you are so newbie, XD. <laughs> I love it. I love it because this strategy triggers people. He says, this is very boring. This strategy triggers people and Fatslav doesn't say a word. As he said in his comment. He said he's not doing this intentionally to make people angry. However, he cannot complain when someone you know, calls him a noob and then he wins. Because I believe he said, what does it say about them if they lose to a noob like me, right? That That is the logic that I used. That was an argument I used when, uh, you know, playing sports growing up. Like in gym class and someone's like, oh, you suck. I'm like, well, I just beat you, so what does it say about you, man? But it's not often I use that nowadays. Uh, it's not often I use that in Age of Empires. Fatslob, that's an everyday thing for him. And now Red's a 200 population. Fatslob, 196, 7, probably 8, 9, 200 population. And we're going to have another wave. Let's keep in mind, Red is getting this extra gold. Yeah. But if you look at the total gold collected with the relics right now, that, yeah, I mean, there's a, a pretty substantial difference there. So in the end, I think Red having this gold pile will be like Fatslop having the extra relic. And of course, the longer this game goes on, the more Fatslop will benefit, as that relic will always give him resources. So I really do think that Fatslop would struggle if Red used his mobility. So Red is chopping through here. Maybe he'll get through and then he could raid with Light Cav and hit Fatslop's wood economy and farm economy. Fatslop can see half of the Light Cav here with his Palisade trick. This is pretty crazy. This is pretty crazy, guys. Just look at these forces. Now, of course, Fatslob's force is going to be much stronger. No doubt about it. We've seen we've seen just how good he does with the fights. His micro's been really good. I have to give him credit. His, uh... <laughs> his farm eco is... is kind of a disaster, but... I won't judge him for his farms, because I know how it feels. Yeah, when I, when I play on stream, people people imply that I'm not good at placing farms, okay? But listen, Fatslob, he doesn't need farms, so why would I, okay? Let's let's find a new new person to pick on. Let, let's pick let's pick on uh well, I don't know. I got to be careful. Got to be careful. I I say a top player's name and then they they Fatslob me, so so we're going to see a fight here. We're going to see a fight here. And Red's light cap are all moving at the speed of this arbalest and the sheep. So they're going really slow. And look at the HP bar. Look at the health bar. Oh my god. He's lost 30. He's going to lose 60. I wish I could have looked at the KD prior to that to see just how many kills Red got. Because I, I think maybe he got 5 at most. But he, he lost 60 pop just like that. It's insane. And now Fatslob recognizes that he should probably move in. However, he meets a choke point where there's onagers. So he backs up. And this is how you should do it. This is how you should do it. Lure those onagers out. So he pulls back. Then he goes back in. He, he ducks underneath those rocks. And Fatslob is doing one heck of a job yet again. To take the better fight. 643 kills for him, 357 deaths. I think it's safe to say that Light Cab is not the best decision for Red. But the point is, if it's this your first time versus Fat Slob, you just don't know what he's gonna do. Because you rarely see this composition, if at all, from Vikings. 
So it's not a bad decision to go light cap in other scenarios, but versus Fat Slob, it's obviously not to play. And Fat Slob has 99 military units, 101 now actually. The red's down to 36. So with this number discrepancy, Fat Slob could finish off the game here. He really could. He does this again. He pulls the Zergs back. He goes back in. And he's killed a castle, finally. He's killed a few of the uh, Onagers. It's getting more and more difficult for Red to create Onagers, of course. And Red is losing his siege workshops. And he continues to try. And I'm sure he's real happy about this at the moment. I'm sure he's just loving life. He probably is staying up later than he should. He probably has work at 7 a.m. in the morning, and it's 2 a.m. and he's playing Fat Slob. He's probably pissed. That's what he is. I think we can all relate. Any gamer out there can probably relate to that, where you stay up too late. You have horrible sleep the next day. Uh, you have uh, very little sleep, and you feel horrible the next day, and you have no benefit. You didn't play a good game. You played an awful game, a frustrating one. And <laughs> it just continues for Red. He won't kill that trebuchet. He will lose this castle. And Fat Slob is finally pushed past the point where his original wall was. He's finally back. He's finally solidified this. And his kills just continue to rise. 795 kills for Fat Slob. 402 deaths. So a 2 to 1 KD. And he's actually into Red's economy. Oh! Oh! So this is probably the wrong time to be doing this, but Red is through. He's just gone through with trips. And he's going to spam Light Cap into Fat Slop's economy. Question is, is it too late? That's... That's both good and bad for him. That's the worst possible time for a very good thing. <laughs> and yeah, Fat Slop has reacted to this. And he's sending an army back. Still, though, with 100 military versus 20, I don't think Fat's up is going to have any issue holding the front and defending his base. So it's too little and too late for Red. And goodness gracious, just look at the score on the bottom right. This is... That's not something I've looked at in a while. This is just complete domination from Fat's up now. And I just wonder if Red is going to say anything more. Because he said it was boring. At one point, he said Fat Sub was so newbie at another point. And I think Red is... He's playing purely on Salt right now. Oh, here we go. He said, really, man, you are so stupid. I'm boring all game. This is... This no is age. So he's saying, listen, man, the way you play is dumb. This is not how Age of Empires 2 is meant to be played. But this is where my point from earlier comes into play. Fatsob has it clear in the lobby. It is 1v1 Vikings only Black Forest. So it's really not Fatsob's problem that Red he says this game is stupid. He's pissed. It's really not Fatsob's problem though. Fatsob didn't trick him into playing this. He, he just, uh, you know, was, was doing his thing and Red decided to join. And this is funny because this is normally what people end up thinking after playing Fatslob. Initially, you just don't realize how bad it's going to be. So you have to try it once. And some people go back for more. Some people never go back. Red is still playing on again. He's not playing because he thinks he has a chance now. He's playing because he's frustrated. He just can't believe that he lost this game. He hit the Castle Age first. He hit the Imperial Age first. He had more resources for a while. And he is just frustrated, tilted, whatever you want to call it. And this is why Fat Slob's a legend. <laughs> it really is. I mean, he didn't play bad this game at all. Oh god! Oh god! Did I jinx it? You know, I really think that Red had a lot of opportunities to kill these scorpions, and he went for the trebs instead. I think if he kills the scorpions, 
then he could use the light caps of the traps, but I guess I didn't jinx it. Fatslob, who's closing in now on 4,000 games with these settings over the course of years and years and years of play. He's going to get this victory. It's just a matter of time. Red's going to run out of food. He says, I'm so... I'm so boring. Bye-bye. This game is a shit game. You are so <laughs> noob. Oh, man. He's so pissed. He tries to correct the typo and then has another typo. Um, obviously, English isn't his first language, so we won't, we won't give him a hard time for that. And then he resigns. So no GG. He doesn't say, well played. That strategy was really alarming, Fatslob. That strategy was really surprising. Well played. I'll know what to do next time. He doesn't say that. He says, this game is stupid. I'm so bored. Bye-bye. He's trying to say that the guy who beat him has a boring strategy. But again, as Fatsob said, what does that say about Red? So here's the military stats. Fatsob, over 1,000 units killed there. Solid 2 to 1 KD. I am interested to see the total resources collected. Look at the food that Red had. That wasn't really put to good use in the end, was it? Fat Slop, he had plenty of food. Didn't need 100k, that's for sure. And he had more wood, more stone, and more gold. Of course, the stone he benefited from because there was that extra one on the left-hand side. Uh, the gold he had because of the relics, I imagine. Yep, so that extra gold pile that Red ended up getting had 2,400 gold in it. Wait, yeah, 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 2,400 gold. And there's a very similar difference with the relic. So my math was, was close there on that. Here's the timeline. You can see the spikes from red. This is all light calf. So if you look at the dark color, that is the military. And you see this huge, these huge spikes. And Fatslob was pretty consistent. And that's because of his composition. That's because of his patience. Uh, he had, at this point, is built for those kinds of games. So... This video does not end here. Fatsob has played a lot of games. What we need to do is we need to close this out and go back to Fatsob's profile, see what comments people have left ever since the video. Uh, and also, I'd like to see just some of the in-game chat because there's a cool way we can see that. So we're back to my screen here. Sorry it, uh, I have some of the stream stuff up, but I figured you guys would be okay with it. Let's just, let's just look, see what people have been saying so let's go back to, <laughs> let's go back to, yeah. So he, he posted that comment after the Legend of Fat Slob video, which was nine months ago. Wow, that was a long time ago. Fat Slob is love, Fat Slob is life. You are my favorite <laughs> Black Force Vikings only player. This guy says, see, this guy probably played him. I should look and see when they... When they played find the game he says but what suck is you never say gg if you lose he's bleeping noob can't say gg he is no bleeping legend shut the bleep up <laughs> well i think i think the point is that he's a legend for doing something ridiculous but this guy doesn't agree so we have he's so gay all right so that insult is still a thing in 2018 apparently uh top five player i can agree with that Certainly on 1v1 Black Forest only, he's top five. Hmm. This is when Viper played Fatslob. You guys could probably find that with a little bit of searching. He can be destroyed, although he has not learned how to say GG. The legendary idiot player. The first time I played with him many years ago, and even then I realized this... I realized that this is the biggest noob with a rating of 16+. His game make you laugh long and very long after I understood his game scheme. He won't win me never again more than once. <laughs> and I played with him more than 30 times for sure. <laughs> so while it's obvious that he's not a fan of how Fatslob plays, he's also notably triggered. It is so obvious that he's frustrated with Fatslob. This, this is probably something that he wrote on the guy's profile after playing him. This doesn't just come up out of the blue after seeing my video. No, he probably played him on March 21st and had to vent. Uh, Hallis calls him a legend. 
Uh, this asshole never says GG. This guy came back to... This is months later. He comes back to the profile and says, I agree. This guy, what a nice guy. He says, hey, fat sub, I would love to try and play with you. Morley says, so much siege. Damn, the scorpions. And uh, not too long ago now is no good. Said, honestly touched by your honest confession mes message posted here on the 17th of January. You just gained a new fan. What? What was that? 17th of January. Well, that's 16th. Maybe whoever, maybe is no good is from Europe, and then it would have been the 17th, I guess. So I guess he was touched by the comment. Okay, so we've looked at the what people have said on his profile. Last online was today, 4 p.m. for me, so he's playing matches. Let's look at his matches. So I guess he didn't play today, or at least he didn't play a rated game. I just want to see the stats. So we can see two-hour long game. Any juicy in-game chat? Uh, PDS said 11 at one point. So that, that's not as juicy as I want. I want I want some salt. So probably when Fat Slob wins, there will be salt. Here we go. Stone Man. So basically, just a shitload of Trebs, Scorpions, and Onagers with Berserks, and that's it. I get it now. Oh, well, GG. So that's not really salt. That's not really salt. That... that is a kind observation from Stone Man. He called GG and everything, so let's let's move on. Let's see what we can find. I hate to tease you guys. We might not find any recent ones with any salt, but it really does make me laugh just how many people get annoyed by the guy. Uh, nothing there. What about Bule? Bule. It says 11 WTF. GG. Oh, that's up. This was a two hour long game. Right after Blue called GG, Fats Up said too short. Huh. So he definitely, I mean, he doesn't call GG, which is kind of a normal thing for people to do. And uh, it seems like Fats Up has a little bit of a bite to him at times. Some people like that, some people hate it. This is the game we just casted, of course. I think I'll look at a few more, and then we will look at his uh, statistics before we end the video, which was pretty good representation of how Fatsob plays, I think, or gave you a good idea of how Fatsob plays. Uh, so Stone Man, didn't we just see Stone Man played him? So I guess that wasn't the first time. So at 10 minutes, he said, well, I got three relics, so that is good for me. Ah, uh, nice. Ah. Uh, and here this is normally where players try and drop so they don't die, they don't lose points, and Fat Slub just presses continue. So, okay. Impossible to know if that was a true drop or quit or what. Let's see. I, I see Rob Roy. I click Rob Roy. What do we have here? Rob Roy... He seems like the kind of guy who has a personality. I want to see what his what his thoughts were in this game. Just GG. That's it. Okay, so let's look at Fatslob's rating trends. Let's just look at all the details here. Uh, forgive me if I don't know how to maneuver all this. Okay, so ladder profile should do this. Okay, so we're we're comparing. It does compare our stats, but we don't want to see that. What we want to see is his regular opponents. So there are definitely people who go back to play him. So we have Marco Phoenix. Marco Phoenix has won four out of the six times. Ignore list. This is funny. Hold on, I got to look at this guy's profile separately. That's literally just his name. Okay, so he doesn't have too many games. But whoever ignore list is, he's beaten Fat Slob five times. Is probably on Fat Slob's ignore list. We have Fat Cat, Rob Roy. I mean, there are people that go back and play him at least four more times. Which is funny. Uh, again, we mentioned this in the beginning of the video at Black Forest, Vikings. There was a time, apparently, back in January, where he chose Chinese. And I believe he chose Chinese because people were vil fighting him in the beginning. Because the best way to beat Fat Slob is to fight him off in the beginning and stop him from walling up. And then normally he resigns. 
There are definitely games, if you look back, where he just flat out resigns. And that's that's why. So I think at least once he chose Chinese. I'm trying to go back to January. And he did that probably because of the video on people trying to play him. So I don't remember exactly when it was. We'd have to get lucky. So if it's not this one, yeah, it's obviously going to be Vikings 99% of the time. If it's not this one, we won't we won't really get into it. But guys, that is the Legend of Fat Slob right there. Legend of Fat Slob is alive and well. He's still playing games every day. He's still using the same strategy. And I appreciate you guys watching this video. It's been a blast to cast this one for you. It has been a blast just seeing all your your responses to these legend videos because there's some incredible guys who aren't necessarily pro players who play in these who play this game and it's it's been fun to highlight them and get some laughs and maybe frustration out of it whatever it is so please make sure to like the video if you enjoyed and leave a comment in the chat on if you want to see a legend of huang video because after the legend of john slow i said that i would do an episode two for either fat slob or huang and there was a poll there, and people voted Fat Slob. So you have this. Do you want to see Legend of Huang come back? I think it'd be good to go through Huang's games to see his strategy. He's a guy who plays at a higher level, and he does the same thing. And it's also something that's very unique. So maybe we'll bring that back. But regardless, guys, thank you for watching the video again. And I will see you soon with another Age of Empires 2 Classic. Have a good one.